Okay, welcome back to another tutorial. Today, a client of mine has asked me to print this photo onto an 8x12 paper. Now with that, they want a white border to go around the image so they can put it into a frame. Now, looking at this image here, we go up to image, image size, and look at the resolution and make sure that it's 300 and make sure that the width and height is big enough for us to put onto an 8x12 document page for it to be printed. Looking at that, it's bigger than 8x12. Now if my image came in at 72 dpi, it's telling me that that's 54 inches if it was in centimetres, it would be 137, and in millimetres, it would be 1,371.6 millimetres. So, what I have to make sure is that I click the resample image, so all three are linked. Make that now from 72 to 300, and I can go back to inches, and we're happy days, everything is is still the same. When you're changing the resolution from 72 dpi to 300, you got to make sure that all three are linked. And once all three are linked, and the only way you can do that is from your resample, make sure all three are link, linked, and make sure that when the image is linked at 300 dpi, that it's still a fair size, because you don't want to blow up uh, any images that are too small in size. So, press OK to that. Now, we go File, New, because we want it on a new document, and we've already got it here, which is the width 12 inches, the height is 8 inches, the only reason that we're doing 12 um, for the width and 8 for the height is because this image is actually horizontal, so we want it to fit within that page. The resolution, 300 pixels per inch. The RGB color mode, if I had it on grayscale, it would come in as a black and white image, and we don't want that. And your color space um, is sRGB, which matches the color space of the document. And most photographic images come in at sRGB. Press OK to that. There's our white page. We now pick it up and just move it to the side here. Now with the move tool, which is this one up at the top here with a little arrow on the cross here, click on our image and hold down the shift key and drag across. What that does, it then places the image in the dead center. If we go up to view, screen mode, full screen mode with menu bar, it gives us a gray background. Now if we actually go edit, transform, scale, it shows that the image, there's a dialog box on the outside, that the image is, is bigger than the document. Because I want a white space, I want to downsize that image. And the good thing about downsizing an image, you actually don't lose image quality. If we took that image larger, we would lose image quality. So holding down the shift key, click and drag from one of the corners, holding down the option key actually retains it to the center. Now if I actually just move the shift key, it actually moves it off center and it's really hard to align it from the beginning. So if, we, if you do that by accident, press down the option shift key again and it will actually go from the center out again. So to save time, we'll, we'll press OK to that. And it transforms and we'll move it up into a, into a space. Okay. As you can see, it's quite a difficult process to get it exactly, exactly right with the same amount of space top and bottom. 
but that's pretty close. It's got a it's got a nice white border around it, and it's ready to be printed with a nice key line around. Now, what I like to do when I go to print something is I like to flatten the image. So we go layer, flatten image, and then just file, save as, and we call it uh, Lani. As you can see down the bottom, it says embedded color profile is the sRGB. The format is JPEG. We're saving it to our desktop, so we know where we're saving it. And we just press save. The JPEG options give you an option of how big you want to save that image. And 12, leave it at 12 because you want it the best quality as possible. Press OK. Once that's saved, you can pick that up on a memory stick and take it down to the lab and get it printed. Now, most labs print 8 by 12 and so what you see on the screen there is what you'll get out of the printer. So instead of paying that extra dollar for a border, white border to go around your image, you can create your own white border. I hope you enjoyed that tut tutorial uh, and I hope to put some more up soon.